All right, guys, so we're back with another video. So in this video, what I want to do is I want to structure our library so that it looks a little bit more better because we don't want to put everything in just one file. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to actually fix this up real quick. So in the last video, you can see that I actually, I think I had any as a type, but we're actually going to use this exclamation mark, which means that we are asserting that this type is going to be WebSocket. This basically tells TypeScript that we know more about this variable and its type than TypeScript itself is guessing. So we're also going to give interval the type of number and initialize it to zero for now. And that should pretty much fix up these linting errors that we had before. And we're also going to create an interface. So let me create an interface real quick. The reason why I want to create an interface is because I want to take advantage of the TypeScript features, because if we're using TypeScript, we might as well take advantage of these features that JavaScript does not have. Otherwise, there would be no point to use TypeScript. And now this interface is going to pretty much uh, structure what our payload is going to look like every single time. So for example, our payload has the property op for the op code, which is a type of a number. Our payload also has the T property, which is the event name, which is going to be a string. S is a sequence, which is going to be a number. And then we also have D, which is the payload data, but it's going to be random every single time from the gateway. So we're going to leave the type as any. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and infer this payload variable type to be a payload. But first we need to import our interface. So let's do that. So interface is payload.ts. And now we can infer this type as a payload. So every single time when we parse this, TypeScript will know that this is always going to be a payload type. So now I can actually reference properties and you can see that they appear on the IntelliSense. If I get rid of this tap annotation, you'll see that there are no uh, properties that are showing up right now. Okay, so now TypeScript knows what this payload type is, which is good. So what we're gonna do next is, let me actually refactor this uh, code real quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually get the, I'm gonna destructure the event name up here, as well as the opcode from payload. And we're gonna change the switch case to just check for op instead of payload.op. And then down here, we're going to destructure the heartbeat interval from payload.d, just so it looks a little bit cleaner. Okay, that's should be fine for now. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so next thing that we need to actually do is we need to actually handle our events. In the last video, we focused on just restructuring everything. In this video, our main goal is to handle our events actually. So whenever, for example, whenever the client goes online, we want to emit some kind of event. We're gonna go and create a new folder called models. And I'm also gonna create, um, let's see, I'll create a new folder called client. And now this class itself is going to be our client class. So we're gonna go ahead and do export default class client. And we're gonna need to use an event emitter because we need to be able to listen to events as well as emit them. So we're gonna import event emitter directly from the Deno repository. This is built in with uh, Deno. And actually, I think they actually ported the event emitter from Node.js. So we're gonna extend event emitter, which means that we inherit all of the fields, all of the methods, as well as any events that the event emitter itself, the parent class has. And now we're gonna go ahead and import WebSocket Manager. So import WebSocket Manager from ws.ts. And we're gonna have a field called socket and we're just going to instantiate it and we're gonna pass in this. The reason why I'm passing in this, which is referring to the client instance itself is because inside the WebSocket manager, we're going to take in that client parameter just like this. Okay, and let me actually make this private. And now what this means is we can actually reference client inside this WebSocket manager file because right now we need to actually emit events whenever the gateway sends a payload. So for example, whenever the payload uh, is sent to our connection, we want to check what that event is. And wherever that event is, we're going to fire the appropriate event with the client event emitter with our client class. So for example, if event, we're gonna to check to see if event is truthy because whenever we receive payloads, there might be a chance that the event itself, the T value is null. So we wanna check for that. And what I'll do is I'll just log event for now. And let me actually run the code real quick. Okay, so notice how my bot's not on right now. So, whoops. Uh, hold on, we need to pass in clients. Oh wait, this is the socket manager. Let me just get rid of this for now. Cause I wanna show you guys something real quick. Okay, so let's replace the bot token. Okay, so let's pass that in. And now I'm going to go and just run the code. So allow net index.ts. Uh, let's see. All right, let's get rid of this for now. Okay, so the bot is logged in. And now you can see that in the console, it's logging uh, an event was triggered. 
as well as the event name. So what we want to do is let me just get rid of all of this real quick. Let's go back to what we originally wanted to do essentially right over here. So what we want to do is right over here, we want to fire an event on the client because something just happened on Discord. So the gateway itself, the Discord gateway fired an event and we need to handle that event. So what we're going to do, and this is actually one thing that I saw that the Discord JS library does is they have something called actions, which I didn't really get a chance to look through everything, but I actually thought it was pretty cool the way they handled it. So if you look at the source code right over here in WebSocket Manager, they have this required up here called packet handlers. And if you look right over here, over here, they're calling handle packet, which what this will do is I think it's going to call the correct packet handler file or the correct packet handler function. So you see how over here, what's going to happen is uh, it's going to go inside this folder and it's going to look for the correct event to fire. So for example, if the ready event was fired, what happens is they have the client, they have their data and the shard. Yeah, I just want to show you guys where I got the inspiration from. Obviously, the goal is not to copy every single thing that they're doing. I just want to show you that the code that the Discord JS developer wrote for their library is actually really well structured and the reason why it's so powerful is because they have really good developers that maintain this library that have worked in this library for years and i'm definitely inspired by the way that they handle a lot of things with discord js but like i said the goal is not to copy discord js or rewrite discord js we're trying to just build our own discord library with Deno. anyways so what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the same pattern but i think the way that i want to handle this is i'm gonna create a file called handlers and we're gonna do the same thing we're going to just simply create a, a ready.ts file and this file is just going to export a function so export default function and now this function is going to take in two parameters it's going to take in the client and we're going to take in a payload so let's import payload as well okay and the reason why we are taking the client is because we're going to go and import the file from here so the the way we're, that we're going to do that is we're simply going to go ahead and do const module or i think it's sorry default module so we're going to do import and i'm simply just going to go ahead and do handlers and then the name of the event dot ts this is pretty much a dynamic import so you can see uh what's going on over here Okay, there we go because import returns a promise okay so essentially what we're doing is we're importing the correct event file that's why for all of our handlers we're going to go ahead and name them accordingly so for example if the guild create event happens we're going to name our guild create file as guild uppercase underscore uppercase create dot ts that way we can just dynamically import the correct file and then execute the function that we are exporting so now i'm going to go ahead and just do module and we're going to pass in clients as well as the payload uh, let's see what's going on here. Oh, this not client. So now watch what's going to happen when we actually go inside here. Log the payload. We're going to get an error because we haven't implemented guild create yet. But let's just go ahead and run our code now. So then I'll run allow net next.ts. Uh, okay, so now in order for us to actually get this to work, we got to do a couple things because right now we don't want to obviously import WebSocket Manager. That should be something abstracted away from the user. We want to import clients and then make the connection through there. So what we're going to do is the client class is going to have a login method that's going to take in the token. And this is just going to reference this .socket login. That's it. And we're going to pass in that token like that. So now instead of importing WebSocket Manager, we can import client, client.ts. We can create a new instance of that client. And then client.login is going to call this login method, which is then going to call the sockets login method. So let's go ahead and run our code now. So deno run allow net index.ts. Uh, let's see. Oh, I was trying to read a file. So we need to provide the allow read flag. So that's a deno thing because by default, it doesn't have any permissions. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, like I said, there was going to be an error that happened. Okay, so now you can see that we have logged in. Okay, and that's being emitted right over here. Okay, and then you can see that we have the payload all over here. We have all of our center data. And then we also have an event was triggered. And there we go. So now we can go ahead and implement the same thing over here. Okay, and we can just simply just log the payload. And if I save... If I run the bot again, you're going to see that there we go. That's the guild create event. Now you're probably wondering, well, how do we actually get the actual data? So for example, in Discord JS, the client 
object itself, the client instance has a lot of different methods. They also have uh, properties that they have added onto it, such as the managers and previously in version 11 uh, collections. So what we need to do is we actually need to modify the client instance itself. So over here, when the client logs in, we're going to go ahead and take every single property here, and we're going to encapsulate all of them inside its own user file. So like I said, a lot of inspiration is taken from Discord.js. So I'm not claiming that this is going to be the rewrite of Discord.js. I'm not claiming that at all. I'm just saying that we're going to follow a lot of things that they have done in practice. And one of the things that they did was they have what's called a client user class. If you look at the Discord.js documentation, there's a regular user class and there's also a client user class and the client user uh, resembles the actual bot itself. So what we're going to do is I actually had this model created already, so I'm not going to bother rewriting it again, but I'll just paste it in here. But you can see that all of the fields are literally just the same thing with all of these fields over here. The case is literally the same thing. And we're going to go ahead and declare a variable called uh, underscore user. And this is going to be a type of client user. So we're going to need to import that as well. So client user from Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to create some public getter and setters. So set user. So this is going to take in a type of client user. And all this function is going to do is it's going to set the user property to whatever we pass in for user. So this should only be mutated once. We're also going to have a public getter as well, so which is going to be responsible for returning this dot user. I'm just probably going to do it an assertion there we go that's pretty annoying but okay there we go so i think that should be it for that so what we're going to do is we're going to go inside the ready event and watch this so if i reference client i can actually reference user and i can assign it to whatever i want so what i'm going to do is i'm going to import the client user model that i created or the client user class and we're going to go inside uh, clients client user ts and we're going to go ahead and simply say const user equals new client user or actually i think we can do this instead let me do this client dot user equals new client user and now we're going to have to pass in all of the appropriate fields so of course we can create another interface that kind of like mocks all of this data but for now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and do const d from payload and let's see, we want to get, what do we want to get? Uh, where is it? Client user. So we want the username. So d dot username, d dot discriminator, d dot verified, d dot id, d dot flags, d dot email, d dot bot, d dot avatar. I think that should be it. Okay. So now, Watch what's going to happen if I log client again. So let's restart everything. Give it one sec. And there you go. So see how over here we have our client and then we have this user property. Okay, client user, username undefined. Uh, let's see what's going on. Seems like uh, all of our fields were undefined. That's not good. Did I mess something up? Let me just make sure I didn't do anything wrong. Or maybe I may have not passed in the correct fields. Let me double check. Okay, so this is D itself. Oh, D dot user. Okay, sorry about that. So let's see D dot. Oh, what is this? payload.d user. Okay, good, good. So username, discriminator, verified, ID, flags. Okay, perfect. There we go. And of course, if we wanted to get all of the guilds, uh, you can see that in the ready event, or let me actually log that again. Let me log payload.d or yeah, let me log payload.d. And I want to show you guys what we actually need to do. And this is where we're going to actually need to call the Discord REST API to get the data that we want. The gateway, like I said, is only for events. We need to actually manually fetch the data 
if we want it. So see how over here, we have this guilds property, which is an array of all of the guilds that the bot is in. So what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to go ahead and get started with interacting with the REST API. And we're going to fetch every single guild from the Discord REST API. And then we're going to parse it accordingly. So hopefully this video made some sense. And like I said, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out on my Discord server. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.